Hello all. Welcome to another lecture on mechanical injuries. And the topic for discussion is about the medical legal aspect of injuries. I'm Dr. Sanil Kumar, working as professor and head of the department, Department of Forensic Medicine, Government Homeopathic Medical College, Koyinkur. Medical legally, injuries can be classified as suicidal injuries, homicidal injuries, accidental injuries, defense wounds, fabricated wounds, otherwise known as forged fictitious or false wounds. So this is the medical legal classification of injuries and we will discuss one by one. First about suicidal injuries. What are the characteristics of suicidal injuries? Usually a suicide is done at a calm, quiet and lonely place. And if the suicide is done in a room or toilet, it will be bolted from inside. Usually the surroundings or if it is done in the room or toilet, the uh, things that are kept in the room or toilet will not be disturbed. There will be no signs of struggle on the clothes or body of the victim. No defense injuries also. Sometimes there can be hesitation wounds in case of cut throat injuries or uh, cutting the wrist, etc. There can be hesitation wounds and hesitation wounds present suggest mainly suicidal injuries. Sometimes a farewell knot or suicidal knot also may be found besides the body. Mostly weapon will be present at or near the body and usually sometimes the weapon may be held tight in the hand of the victim due to cadaveric spasm. Injury is mostly uh, single surrounded by hesitation cuts and the site and direction of the injury is explainable with the handedness of the person and with self-infliction. And at times there may be evidence of other methods of suicide attempted or uh, sometimes uh, one or two or more types of uh, or methods of suicide may be attempted together by the person. This also suggests suicidal injuries. Next is about homicidal injuries. The characteristics of homicidal injuries are it may uh, be caused at any place. The surroundings are usually disturbed and unless the victim is taken aware or if he is attacked suddenly, uh, the surroundings may not be disturbed or and uh, homicidal injuries occurs when it, uh, he, uh, they are uh, threatened or attacked by a gang also, or gang war. And the signs of struggle usually will be present on the clothes and body and there may be evidence of sexual assault on a female victim. So while doing autopsy uh, for a homicidal injury, in a female victim, we have to do a thorough examination for getting any evidence of sexual assault. The defense wound also may be present. And weapons is usually missing in homicidal injuries. Sometimes it may be present besides the body. And uh, usually uh, injuries may be uh, multiple or it can occur on any part of the body also. Next, what is the definition of homicide? So uh, homicide is defined as killing of a human being by another human being. And there's a statement that killing of a fetus is not homicide. And uh, homicide cannot be done by an animal or machinery. So homicide is defined as a killing of a human being by another human being. This is classification of homicide. Usually homicide is classified into two, that is lawful homicide and unlawful homicide. There are two types of lawful homicide, justifiable and excusable homicide. And unlawful homicide are also of two types, culpable homicide, and rash or negligent homicide. Culpable homicide, section 299 IPC, rash or negligent homicide, section 304 A IPC. And uh, culpable homicide is of two types amounting to uh, culpable homicide amounting to murder, that is section 300 
IPC and the punishment given in Section 302 IPC and capital homicide not amounting to murder, Section 304 IPC. So, uh, first type of homicide is lawful homicide. So, lawful homicide is basically under the provision done under the provisions of law, and so uh, lawful homicide is not punishable. There are two types of lawful lawful homicide. First type is uh, justifiable homicide. That is, uh, the homicide is justified or sanctioned as per law. A first example is the capital punishment awarded by courts and. Uh, uh, the capital punishment in India is usually by hanging till uh, hanging by neck till death. So the hangman uh, is actually doing a homicide, but it is considered as a lawful homicide. And killing while uh, suppressing the riots by army personnel or police uh, officers, it is also considered as a lawful homicide. And killing by lawfully executing the arrest of a person is also considered as a lawful homicide. Second type of lawful, lawful homicide is excusable homicide. So excusable homicide is homicide which is excused by law. Example, homicide done by a child less than seven years of age, explained in section 82 IPC. As per Indian law, the minimum age for a criminal responsibility is uh, seven years. So, uh, if the homicide is done by a child less than seven years of age, it is considered as excusable homicide. And homicide by an insane person, section 84 IPC, homicide by one who is given intoxicant against his, against his will, section 85 to 86. So, if a person is uh, given an intoxicant against his will, and if he has done homicide under the influence of that intoxicant, uh, he will be excused. And homicide by one who is suffering from delirium tremens uh, is also excusable, section 35, 85 to 86 IPC. So delirium tremens, I, as you all know, is a syndrome which involves mental deterioration due to chronic alcoholism. Section uh, 96 to 100, uh, defines uh, killing during self-defense. So killing during self-defense is also excusable by law. So uh, who all will get the right of self-defense? So uh, right of self-defense uh, extends to a person uh, while defending his own body, while defending his, some somebody else's body, and while defending a girl being raped or likely to be raped and uh, the right of self-defense extends to while defending public property also. So these are, these are circumstances where right of self-defense uh, applies while defending one's own body, while defending someone, somebody else, while defending a, a girl being raped or likely to be raped and while defending public property. The last example is death while doing a lawful act with care and caution or death during an act done with consent and for his benefit. This is explained in section 87 to 89. And uh, this section is applicable to doctors uh, while doing a lawful operation even without consent. And if it is proved that the operation was done in good faith, a doctor is immune to punishment. The second type is unlawful homicide, that is homicide which is not permissible by law and so uh, unlawful homicide is uh, commonly punishable. Two types are there, culpable homicide and rash or negligent homicide. Culpable homicide is explained in section 299 IPC. There are two types of culpable homicide amounting to murder, uh, section 300 IPC, culpable homicide not amounting to murder, section 304 IPC. And second type is rash or negligent homicide, section 304A IPC. Culpable homicide. The word meaning of culpable is chargeable or punishable. So culpable homicide refers to a homicide done with the intention of causing death or with the knowledge that his act uh, may lead to death. Two types, murder and culpable homicide not amounting to murder. Section 299 IPC explains culpable homicide. So culpable homicide is causing death by doing an act with the intention of causing death, with the intention of causing such bodily injuries as is likely to cause death, and with the intention that knowledge that such act is likely to 
faster. So these are the three things that is to be proved. That is the injury was caused with the intention of causing death or the intention of causing such bodily injuries is likely to cause death or with the knowledge that uh, the causing such bodily injury is likely to cause death. The explanation for 299 IPC, culpable homicide is like this. A person who uh, causes bodily injury to another is uh, who is suffering from a disease uh, disorder or bodily infirmity, which accelerates the death of the person shall be deemed to have caused his death. So if a person attack uh, another person who is having a uh, suffering from a uh, disorder, disease, or bodily infirmity, and uh, if the person causes a bodily injury to another, which accelerates the death of the person, already the person is um, uh, disordered or, or having a disease, and the bodily injury actually accelerates the death of the person, the person who causes the bodily injury shall be deemed to have caused his death. The second is uh, where death is caused by bodily injury, the person who caused such bodily injury shall be deemed to have caused death, although by skillful treatment, the, the, the death might uh, have been prevented. So usual um, excuse of the assailant or the person who caused the uh, death may be that uh, if the victim has been uh, subjected to skillful treatment that might have been prevented. So this is uh, actually not an excuse for culpable homicide. So when, a, when the death is caused by bodily injury, the person who caused such bodily injury shall be deemed to have caused death, although skillful treatment uh, might have prevented the death. And the third is uh, causing of death of a child in the mother's womb is not homicide, but it may be uh, considered as culpable homicide to cause the death of a living child. If any part of the child has been brought forth, uh, though the child may not have breathed or, have, or been completely born. So the death of a child in the mother's womb is not homicide, but it may be considered as culpable homicide. Next about murder. The definition of murder is ex uh, given in section 300 IPC, the punishment given under section 302 IPC. The punishment may be death sentence or impre uh, life imprisonment with uh, force. And uh, for explaining homicide uh, and uh, for explaining homicide to be murder, we have to uh, prove certain points that is there should be some malice for so there should be some motive for killing there should be some preparation for killing and uh, finally the execution of the plan and when the person is caught the assailant usually puts forth an excuse so these are the uh, conditions uh, for murder firstly the, there should be some forethought some motive, some preparation, execution of the plan, and if the person is caught, the Athena usually puts for them excuse. Section 300 IPC, a culpable homicide is murder. If the act by which the death is caused is done with the intention of causing death. So we have to prove the intention of the uh, person who has committed an offense uh, to causing death. So the first point is to prove the intention. Second is, if it is done with the intention of causing bodily injury as the offender knows to be likely to cause death. So the bodily injury that was caused by the offender, he should know that such bodily injury is likely to cause death. Or if it is done with the intention of causing bodily injury, which is sufficient in the ordinary course of nature to cause the death. So third point is, uh, if the assailant is causing a bodily injury and he knows that uh, this type of bodily injury will in ordinary course of nature will cause a slow death or death after some time, that is to be proved. And if the person committing the act knows that the act is so immediately dangerous that it must in all probability cause death 
or such bodily injury as to cause death and commit such uh, act without any excuse so this is the definition given for for murder in section 300 ipc some exceptions are given to section 300 ipc that is murder culpable homicide does not amount to murder if the act by which death is caused is done under grave and sudden provocation so under grave and sudden provocation one if a person is committing uh, homicide it can be it cannot be considered as uh, murder and in good faith of the right of defense of a person on property for the advancement of public justice without premeditation the homicide is done without premeditation it cannot be considered as uh, murder and when the person above the age of 18 years taken the risk of death with his own consent these are the exceptions given to section 300 ipc and uh, to prove the charge of murder or culpable homicide the investigating team has to give uh, reasons for two things that is injury inflicted on the deceased was actually the cause of death and this has to be proved by a thorough autopsy and by the statement given by the autopsy surgeon so which injury inflicted on the deceased was actually the cause of death then the act was second point to be proved that the act was committed with the intention of causing such bodily injury as the offender knew that it was likely or sufficient in the ordinary course of nature to cause death so this also has to be proved that the injury was committed with the intention of causing death either sudden death or a delayed death and if these two conditions are not satisfied the assailant may be convicted under the offense of culpable homicide not amounting to murder so the charge of 300 will not stay and uh, the charge of homicide or murder will be converted to the charge of uh, culpable homicide not amounting to murder that is 304 or uh, it can be a grievous hurt 320 or simple hurt according to the circumstances of the case including the kind of weapons and the site of violence and uh, difference between culpable homicide and murder so the offense of uh, culpable homicide is uh, if the body injury intended to be inflicted is likely to cause death it is not sure but it can likely uh, the bodily injury inflicted can be likely to cause death if it is murder it will the bodily injury is sufficient to the ordinary course of nature to cause death so it is it would be a sure uh, case of uh, uh, death and the type of injury that is inflicted on the victim will be sufficient to the ordinary course of nature to cause death and uh, the distinction between culpable homicide and murder is appreciable but it is very fine so usually the in the absence of uh, sufficient evidence uh, sometimes some uh, charge of murder will not stand and uh, the uh, case will be considered as culpable homicide not amounting to murder or grievous uh, injury and uh, for considering uh, a case to be a murder or a culpable homicide not amounting to murder or grievous hurt the nature of weapon also has to be considered For example a blow from the fist or a stick on a vital part may be likely to cause death and a wound from a knife in a vital part is sufficient in the ordinary course of nature because so the nature of weapon has to be considered to uh, explain whether it is a uh, murder it is a uh, uh, culpable homicide not amounting to murder or grievous injury so we will be uh, dealing with the different sections that are applicable to uh, injuries section 302 ipc is punishment for murder usually the punishment will be 
death sentence or imprisonment for life and also fine. Section 303 IPC explains punishment for murder by a life convict. So if a murder is done by a life convict and uh, if he is uh, going through the, uh, the uh, life sentence and uh, the punishment for murder by a life convict is death or capital punishment. Section 304 IPC is punishment for culpable homicide not amounting to murder. The punishment is imprisonment for life or up to 10 years and also fine. Section 305 is abatement of suicide of child or uh, insane person. Abatement means causing uh, the suicide of child or insane person. The punishment is 10 years imprisonment. Section 306 IP is, IPC is abatement of suicide by an adult. Now coming to section 304 IPC, uh, culpable homicide not amounting to murder, the punishment is up to 10 years uh, to life imprisonment and also fine example if the homicide is uh, done by a sudden or a gross provocation or attacking and uh, killing a person suffering from the pathology of viscera like uh, 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 aneurysm, fatty degeneration of heart, uh, duodenal ulcer, enlarged spleen, etc. Section 304A is rash or negligent homicide. That is uh, uh, being rash or negligent while doing a lawful act and causing death. This is also this also explains the punishment for criminal uh, negligence by a registered medical practitioner. And the punishment may be imprisonment up to two years or fine or both. That is. Some acts that are considered as rash or negligent homicide is rash or negligent driving, professional medical negligence or uh, criminal negligence, death due to anesthesia, death on the oper operation table, or death during sports. Section 304B IPC is dowry death and this is punishable with imprisonment up to seven years to life imprisonment according to the case. Section 307, 308 and 309 IPC. So Section 307 IPC is attempt to murder and this is punishable with 10 years imprisonment. 308 IPC is attempt to commit culpable homicide which is punishable with imprisonment up to 10 years. And 309 is attempt to commit suicide. So whoever attempts to commit suicide and does any act towards the commission of such offense shall be punished with Im simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with both. So uh, in Mental Health Care Act 2017, section 115, nothing withstanding anything contained in section 309 IPC, any person who attempts to commit suicide shall be presumed unless proved otherwise to have severe mental stress and shall not be tried and punished under the above said code. So till 2017, case may be taken for attempt to commit suicide and this can be pun punishable with simple, simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with both. But uh, on passing Mental Health Care Act 2017, uh, it should be considered that uh, the person who attempts to commit suicide uh, have been under severe mental stress. So uh, he may not be punishable or uh, he should not be tried under section 309 IPC. Otherwise, other, uh, in other terms, the attempt to commit suicide is not punishable after uh, 2017. Section 319 explains hurt. So hurt means bodily pain, disease or infirmity caused to any person. And usually hurt does not include mental pain or anguish. Section 312 to 328 of IPC deals with causing hurt and their punishments. Section uh, 320 uh, explains grievous hurt. Section 321 IPC voluntarily causing hurt. Section 322 IPC voluntarily causing grievous hurt. Section 323 IPC, punishment for causing voluntary, uh, so uh, voluntarily causing hurt, imprisonment up to one year or with fine 
uh, up to thousand rupees or both. So uh, another important topic usually ask for your examinations in section three twenty IPC. This explains grievous hurt. So any of the following injuries are grievous. First is em emasculation. Second, permanent privation of sight of either eye. Permanent privation of hearing of either ear. Privation of any member or joint. Destruction or permanent impairing of power of any member or joint. Permanent disfigurement of the head or face. Fracture or dislocation of a bone or tooth. Any hurt which endangers life or which causes the victim to be in severe bodily pain or unable to follow his ordinary pursuits for a period of 20 days. These eight points have to be are included in grievous hurt. So emasculation means a loss of masculinity or a loss of uh, power of erection of the penis. And emasculation can be due to cutting of penis, uh, can be due to head injury or due to injury to spinal cord, especially to the coda equina or can be uh, by castration or cutting of uh, testis since before puberty. So this is the uh, first point that is emasculation. Second point is uh, permanent privation or deprivation of the sight of either eye. Even if the permanent privation of sight is partial or even it is curable, this is considered as grievous hurt. And this can be uh, due to injury to the cornea, lens, or eyeball. Third point is permanent privation or deprivation of hearing of the eye, the ear. Even it is partial or even it is curable, it is considered as uh, grievous hurt. And this can be due to a blow to head or ear, inserting something into the ear, injury to the tympanum, injury to auditory nose, or pouring uh, hot liquid into the ear. Fourth point is privation of any part, organ, or limb of the body. Example, eye, ear, nose, tongue, limb, hand, foot, or finger, etc. And if the joint becomes permanently stiff, uh, so that uh, the normal function is not possible, it is considered as a grievous injury. The fifth point is permanent privation of functioning of any part, organ, or limb of the body. That is... Uh, Sometimes stricture can occur due to burns, uh, due to corrosives or any other type of injury, damage to tendons due to blunt or sharp force injury, which may lead to permanent impairment of power of joints or muscles and this constitutes grievous hurt. Any fracture of a bone or tooth or dislocation of a joint or tooth, even if the fracture or dislocation is partial, it is considered as grievous injury and it is not an argument that it is a small bone. So even if the bone is a bone or a dislocation is of a small joint or a, a fracture of a small bone, it is considered as grievous hurt. Then the fracture of a bone or tooth causes great pain and suffering to the injured person and usually it is considered as grievous hurt. Seventh point is permanent disfigurement of uh, face or head, example, like in acid attack. And the eighth point is any injury which endangers life or any injury which causes the person to be in a state of bodily pain for more than 20 days so that uh, he cannot pursue his uh, daily routine work. So the definition of hospitalization is uh, it does not necessarily mean pain due to pain. And the daily routine work is uh, like going to the toilet, taking food, taking bath, etc. And usually the uh, medical officer who is uh, attending the person is uh, making the entry as a simple injury or a grievous hurt and uh, he will be recording this in the injury report and this will uh, guide the investigating officer in uh, the right direction. And um, the final decision rests with the court whether the injury is a simple injury, a dangerous injury or a, or a grievous hurt. Some illustrations uh, are given in section 320 IPC like this. A woman was confined to a hospital for 17 days uh, due to certain injuries inflicted on her, but her life was in danger for three days only. So this was considered as a uh, grievous injury because her life was in danger for three days. Then uh, 
the thrusting of lati into the anus of a man has been held to be causing uh, grievous hurt which endangers life then during a uh, fight the victim was stabbed on the left forearm with a knife due to which the radial artery was injured and the victim died soon after due to hemorrhage and uh, the court held that the offense uh, is neither murder nor culpable homicide not amounting to murder but because the forearm is not a vital part and the accused was held to be guilty of voluntarily causing grievous hurt with a deadly weapon so the circumstance explains uh, this case and in case of injury to the abdomen when the intestines has come out of the wound it was held to be grievous hurt a deep injury which may be deep to the bone but without a cut in the bone or fracture is not grievous hurt and where the death is caused as a result of an injury which is not intended to cause death and was not in normal conditions likely to, to cause death it's neither grievous hurt nor culpable homicide not amounting to murder and coma for 20 days due to head injury constitutes grievous hurt these are some of the illustrations of section 320 ipc section 324 ipc is voluntarily causing hurt by dangerous weapon or means that is uh, 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 the punishment is for 3 years imprisonment then section 325 ipc is punishment for voluntarily causing grievous hurt the punishment is uh, imprisonment extending to a term of 7 uh, years and also fine section 326 ipc is voluntarily causing grievous hurt by dangerous weapon or means that is imprisonment up to 10 years and also fine section 326 a ipc is voluntarily causing grievous hurt by the use of as it etc in punishable with is punishable with imprisonment of not less than 10 years but may extend to life and with fine so basically uh, the punishment for voluntarily causing grievous hurt by dangerous weapons or means is uh, up to 10 years imprisonment but in uh, section 26 326 a if it is caused by as it uh, the punishment um, which will be not less than 10 years but may extend to life in section 326 b voluntarily uh, throwing or attempting to throw as it not necessarily causing uh, any injury the imprisonment will be not less than 5 years and also fine section 320 uh, 351 explains assault and assault is considered as an off, offer or threat or attempt to apply criminal force to the body of another in a hostile manner and it can be a uh, common assault or it can be done with an intention to cause murder and the section 352 to 358 ipc deals with the punishment for various types of assaults section 362 explains abduction so abduction is uh, wherever by force uh, compels or by any deceitful means induces any person to go from any place is said to abduct that person abduction is also uh, called a uh, kidnapping another term uh, for abduction is kidnapping that is by force uh, somebody compels any person to go from place to place so abduction may take place against uh, any person or of any age and for abducting a person force compulsion or deceit means may be used so while considering the case of an abduction the intention of the abductor is an important factor in determining guilt of the accused so uh, not a sub, uh, abduction is not a substantive offense and abduction is usually punishable only when there is some other intent uh, example uh, under um, considered as uh, section 364 to 360 and different circumstances are there if the abduction is done with some criminal intent only uh, abduction can be punished another important uh, topic for discussion is uh, dowry death explained in section 304 b ipc so according to the dowry prohibition act passed in 1961 dowry means 
any property or valuable security given to or agreed to be given either directly or indirectly by one part to marriage to the other party to marriage or by the parents of either party to marriage or by another person uh, to either party to the marriage in connection with the marriage of the said parties but does not include uh, mahar in the case of persons whose muslim personal law applies to so uh, in the definition of dowry it does not include mahar and uh, the valuable uh, property or security should be having a value uh, of more than 2000 section 3 of the dowry prohibition act 1961 provides for penalty for giving or taking dowry and section 4 for the penalty for demanding dowry and section 304 b ipc where the death of a woman is caused by any burn or bodily injury or occurs otherwise than under normal circumstances within 7 years of her marriage and if it is shown that soon after the death she was subjected to cruelty or harassment by her husband or any relative of her husband for or in connection with any demand for dowry such deaths shall be called dowry death and such husband or relative shall be deemed to have caused her death and whoever commits dowry death shall be punished with imprisonment of not less than 10 years which may extend to life imprisonment also section 498a ipc deals with domestic violence whoever be, being the husband or the relative of the husband of the woman subject such woman to cruelty shall be punished with imprisonment for term which may extend to 3 years and shall also be liable to fine uh, for academic purpose cruelty means any willful conduct which drives the woman to commit suicide or grave mental or physical injury to her or harassment of the woman with a view to coerce or force her for dowry section 113a and section 113b of indian evidence act deals with the presumption as to abatement of suicide by a married woman and presumption as to dowry death section 174 subsection 3 of uh, ipc is a procedure that is to be followed in dowry death and uh, if it is a suicide or suspected murder uh, or there is a request by a relative or there is doubt of uh, cause of death a police inquiry uh, will be considered necessary and so the police has to enquire and report the case to the magistrate and uh, in case of dowry death or suspected dowry death we have to look for signs of neglect physical injuries poisoning infertility pregnancy and if he if she is un, in the menstrual phase and uh, such murders or uh, such cases of uh, dowry death Uh, may be committed uh, secretly either in the house of the uh, victim or at the place where outsiders may not witness it and the common procedures are like uh, the bride may be burned or killed by various methods in the in all dowry case, uh, dowry cases the usual defense that is uh, put forth by the defense party is that either the woman has committed suicide or death has occurred accidentally due to burns while cooking food in the kitchen and uh, the doctor should make a record of the history of injuries and the person responsible for it when the victim is brought to the hospital noting the time and the date name of the person who gave the history the condition of the victim should be recorded at frequent intervals during treatment and care should be taken that no person Uh, should have a discussion with the victim to avoid any undue influence being exerted on her and uh, if the doctor cons uh, considers that uh, death is imminent a magistrate may be called to record the dying declaration a visit to the scene of crime by the doctor and other forensic experts will be very helpful in determining the manner of death and the inquest should be conducted by a magistrate Uh, or uh, police officer not below the rank of dysp 
and autopsy should be carried out by two doctors in case of dowry death. And if the age of the woman is less than 30 years and uh, who is dying of suspicious circumstances, uh, it is a routine that this uh, death may be considered as uh, dowry death unless otherwise proved. The third type of medical legal injury is uh, accidental injuries and this may occur due to fall or due to vehicle accidents and are usually present on one side of the body and predominantly on the parts overlying the bone or bony prominences. So uh, there can be three types of injuries, primary impact injuries, secondary impact injuries and secondary or tertiary injuries. And the impact of the vehicle depends upon the part of the vehicle that hits uh, the victim. That is, that is, that explains the primary impact injuries. The victim may be thrown forward or he may be thrown to, onto the top of the vehicle and may again impact the vehicle and uh, get injured. And this is called secondary impact injuries. And due to the impact of vehicle, the person may fall. Uh, so injuries may be received uh, depending upon the surface on which he falls, usually on the bony prominence. And these are labeled as secondary injuries or tertiary, secondary uh, or tertiary injuries. And uh, there can be injuries to the occupants of the vehicle also. It's a uh, accidental injuries. This is uh, explained in the lecture on traffic accidents. Next type of injury is defense wounds, and these are defined as the injuries received on the person of the victim uh, during a spontaneous response to defend uh, by catching the weapon or covering the part when attacked. So the most common site of uh, defense wound will be uh, on the dorsum of the hands, on the ulnar aspect of the forearm. Uh, it can be on the palm if uh, there is an attempt to grab the weapon. It may be on the legs if the victim has already fallen on the ground or can be on the back if the victim turns or ducks when uh, he is attacked by a weapon. The usual nature of injuries are uh, incised wounds, rarely lacerations and fractures, stab, uh, abrasions, contusions, and firearms may also uh, occur as defense wounds. The medical legal aspects of uh, defense wound is like that uh, if the uh, defense wound is uh, present, it confirms homicidal attack and also that the while uh, or during the attack, the person was conscious, the victim was conscious. Applicated forged fictitious or false wounds are defined as injuries that are produced or cooked up from the body by himself or someone else working in agreement with him. So the purpose of uh, fabricated wounds may be to support a false charge or to avert suspicion. So uh, to support a false charge, injuries may be caused on his body when actually there was nothing. And sometimes multiple injuries may be caused, though only few were inflicted by the accused. And that the injuries uh, caused the grievous when actually it was a simple injury. So the, in the basic injury that, that was in, inflicted by the assailant may be a, a simple injury. So. Uh, he may convert it to a grievous injury by uh, fabricating the wound. Now, sometimes uh, fabricated wounds may be uh, done to support a false charge that she is being raped or uh, he has been assaulted by police or a master. And uh, to avoid suspicion, sometimes the injuries may be caused by security person who uh, are acting in collision with the thieves and robbers and uh, the security person may create wounds on them so, uh, and uh, pretend that these injuries were uh, done by thieves or robbers while uh, they were attacked. Sometimes uh, fabricated wounds may be uh, uh, created uh, to um, pretend that he was attacked in uh, self-defense and uh, sometimes injuries may be produced uh, uh, in uh, by people in essential services like police and military to take leave uh, to go home or for any other purpose or to leave the service itself. And usually the fabricated injuries are inside wounds and sometimes it can be stab wound or firearm injury. Sometimes uh, it can be chemical burns and very rarely it can be uh, due to abrasions, contusions and lacerations.
the usual site of injury are uh, on the non vital body parts so, mostly the clothes are uh, spared and uh, diagnosis of fabricated wounds uh, can be established by detailed history examination of the body correlation of body uh, injuries on the body with injuries on clothes so we are ending the discussion here the topics discussed today are the medical legal classification of injuries suicidal injuries homicidal injuries we have explained uh, homicide justifiable homicide excusable homicide and unlawful homicide and uh, two types of un unlawful uh, homicide like a culpable homicide not amounting to murder and uh, amounting to murder then the rash or negligent homicide grievous hurt accidental injuries defense wound and fabricated wounds so we are ending the lecture here thank you